Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is the general ability uh, part of uh, electrical engineering uh, of GATE 2021. Let us complete, uh, let us uh, do the, the following questions. The first question, let X be a continuous random variable denoting the temperature measured. The range of the temperature is 0 to 100 degrees Celsius. And let the probability density function of x be function of x is equal to 0 0.01. For x is less than or equal to 100 and greater than or equal to 0. So they have asked you what is the mean for x. Now, x is nothing but the random variable denoting the temperature measured. So basically, it has nothing to do with probability of density function. This is there to confuse you. So basically, you have been asked to find out the mean of 0 to 100, which is obviously 100 plus 0 by 2. That is equal to 50. So basically, the mean of x would be 50, and hence that's the answer. Right? So, absolutely simple. In the figure shown above, each inside square is formed by joining the midpoints of the side of the larger square. The area of the smallest square shaded as shown in centimeter square is how much? Provided the largest square's dimension is 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter. Okay, for this, let us take any square. Say of dimension, let us assume 2a. Now let us join the midpoints to form another square. Obviously, if these midpoints are joined, I hope you all have this idea that there definitely will be another square that will be formed. Now, if this is 2a, then this part is a. And if this is also 2a, then this part is also a. If this is a and a, then what is this? By Pythagoras theorem, root over of a square plus a square, we can say that this root 2a. So this would be root 2a. Now, what is the area of the larger square? The area of the larger square of larger square would be 2a square that is equal to 4a square. What will be the area of the smaller square? The smaller square will be root 2a whole square. That is equal to 2a square. So what do we find? That if we join the midpoints, the square that we get is nothing but the smaller square area is nothing but half the area of the larger square. This is what we find out. Now, if such were the case, this square area is 100. So, this square area must be 50. Hence, this square area must be 25. And hence, this square area must be 12.5. So, everything is half. Then this square area must be 12.5 by 2, that is 6.25. And hence, this final shaded square's area would be half of 6.25, that is 3.125. Um, so this should be the area of this 3.25. Okay. The important of it should be importance as a misprint. 
the importance of sleep is often overlooked by students when they are preparing for the exam. Preparing for exams. Research has consistently shown that sleep deprivation, deprivation means lack. Lack of sleep is called sleep deprivation. Sleep deprivation greatly reduces the ability to recall the material learned. Hence, cutting down on sleep to study longer hours can be counterproductive, means does not yield results, counterproductive meaning. Which one of the following statements is the correct inference? Inference means conclusion. Is the correct inference from the above passage? Let us study the options. To do well in exam, adequate sleep must be part of the preparation. Obviously, that is what the author of the passage has been trying to say, that you must sleep sufficiently. So, obviously, that is correct. Now, had it been an exam, since which one of the following has been said, I would not have gone further to study the others and wasted time because I've got the correct one. Only one must be correct. But this is a not uh, exam hall. So we are discussing. So let us go to the others also. Students are efficient and are not wrong in thinking that sleep is a waste of time. Completely wrong because nothing of that sort has been said here. So that is wrong. If a student is extremely well prepared for an exam, he needs little or no sleep. Obviously wrong because it has not been said here anything to that uh, of that meaning. Sleeping well alone is enough to prepare for an exam. Studying has lesser benefit. And naturally, I don't need to explain this. This is wrong. So as you can see, the correct one is indeed A. The number of students passing or failing in an exam for a particular subject is presented in the bar chart below. Uh, it's written above here, it should be below. Students who pass the exam cannot appear for the exam again. Students who failed the exam in their first attempt must appear for the exam in the following year. Students always pass the exam in the second attempt. The number of students who took the exam for the first time in year two and year three respectively are what? So let us investigate. See in the first year, the number of students who passed is 50. Okay. So they have passed out. But these 10 students fail. So naturally, these 10 students must be a part of this 65 students who have appeared for the exam. See, 5 have failed, 60 have passed. So 65 appeared. But out of this 65, these 10 were also there because they had to appear for the exam the second time. So the number of new examinees would be 65 minus 10. That is equal to 55. So we immediately know that only this option and this option is correct. Okay, let us now go ahead. See, five students fail here. In year three, the number of students who gave the exam is 53. Naturally, 50 passed, three failed. So 53 students must have appeared. But out of these 53 students, Five were from the failures of the previous year. So what were the number of new students who actually took their exam? Means for the first time. So that must be 53 minus 5. That is equal to 48. So we will say 55 and 48 is the correct option. So D is the correct one. Which one of the following numbers is exactly divisible by 11 to the power 13 plus 1. Now we know 
that if suppose there is a number like uh, say for example x to the power 4 minus y to the power 4 if there is a function so not number a function like this we can say that this is x square minus y square into x square plus y square and in return and in the second step we can say that x minus y into x plus y into x square plus y square is the final breakup of this particular thing right now this is 11 to the power 13 plus 1 so naturally we can say now that say for example say for example 11 to the power uh, let us take 52 minus 1. So this can be said as 11 to the power 52 minus 1 to the power 52. And hence we can say first case 52 divided by this is uh, 26. So we can say 11 to the power 26 minus 1 to the power 26 into 11 to the power 26 plus 1 to the power 26. This is of no effect. So this is. Now this we can immediately say now this is 11 to the power 13 minus 1 into 11 to the power 13 plus 1 into 11 to the power 26 plus 1 to the power 26. So as you can see. 11 to the power 52 minus 1 will be perfectly divisible by 11 to the power uh, 13 plus 1 because this is one of the factors of this. Now for all the others that you try, see that will never happen. 11 to the power 39 minus 1 will yield if 39 divided by 2 is a decimal actually because this is an odd number. So 39 by 2 is how much? 19.5. So naturally you can be rest assured that 13 is not going to appear. And these are all pluses, so they never can break up. So naturally our correct answer is found to 11 to the power 52 minus 1. Seven cars, PQ, RSTU, V are packed in a row, parked in a row, not necessarily in that order. The cars T and U should be parked next to each other. The cars S and V should also be parked next to each other. Okay, so we know T and U should be parked next to each other. So the location should be either this or this. Any one of them can be true. Any one of them has to be there. The cars S and V should also be parked next to each other. So it is either SV or VS, either one of them must be true. Whereas P and Q cannot be parked next to each other. So P and Q is an impossibility, it cannot be done. Q and S must also be parked next to each other. So you see Q, S or S. This must also be, a, I mean, you know, a criterion. Now you see, if such is the case, then we can amalgamate these two and say that the case must be either QSV or else it must be VSQ. Either of these two things must happen. And so we cancel these two because they are not useful anymore. R is parked to the immediate right of V. So we know that R is parked to the immediate right of V. So R is parked here. But here, immediate right of V is blocked by S. So we know that this is definitely not one of the cases. Okay. So we are there with these two ideas. Let us see what has been said. Oh, there is another one. T is parked to the left of U. So we immediately know that this is also wrong. T 
city is parked only to the left of you. So what do we have correctly with us? We have correctly with us that T and U are like this. And there is Q, S, V and R like this. And P and Q can never sit together. Okay. So how can we place this? There are seven cards. So you see there are seven gaps. Okay. So see QS, VR and T. Let us suppose we put them in this fashion. T, U, QS, VR. So you see six gaps are filled up. So there must be one more left. Let us not do this. This is not necessary. So you see, there must be one more gap. So where can P sit? Obviously, P can sit here. Or else, P can sit here also. There can be other combinations. Like Q, S, V, R. And Maybe P, U. If such is the combination, then P can only sit here. Because P will not sit beside Q. There could have been another combination as well. Q, S, V, R. A gap and P, U. So in that case, P could have sat next to each other. So all of these cases are correct. Let us now check the options. Now, first of all, let us see whether all the criteria that the cars T and U should be parked next to each other, which is there and T is parked to the left of you, correct? For all the cases, the cars S and V should also be parked to each other, which is correct for all the cases. Whereas P and Q cannot be parked next to each other, which is also the vacant is uh, the vacant is. So I will fill up. Let me fill this up. So you see uh, P and Q are not parked next to each other. Q and S are parked next to each other, which is correct in every case. P is parked to the left of you, which is absolutely correct. So all these four cases are correct. Now let us look at the options. There are two cars parked in between Q and V. See, in the first case only there is one car. So naturally, I can say that this is a wrong one. Next, Q and R are not parked together. See, in all the cases we have seen that Q and R can never be parked together. Because you see, they are different. So we will say this must be the correct one. The only incorrect. So you see, we have finally got uh, the only incorrect. We had got this. So if it were an exam, we would have left here. But no, since this is not an exam, let us proceed. V is the only car parked between S and R, which is true in all the four cases. So this is also correct. Car P is parked at the extreme end, but no, car P is parked at the extreme end for these three, but for here it is not parked at the extreme end. So that leads to a year. Let us see whether we have fulfilled all the criteria. The cars T and U should be parked, cars S and V should be parked, whereas P and P and but Q and S must be parked next to each other. R is parked to the immediate right of V. T is parked to the left of U. Well, uh, this is also a correct one. So this is incorrect. So the only incorrect option given below, there is nothing of that sort. So this leads, uh, I'm not sure whether any criteria has been left out or not. But as far as the criteria given right now, we can say that these two are wrong and B and C is always correct. Because nowhere it has been said that R and P are adjacent or something of that sort. No. So this leads, this is the only case that can happen. I'm not exactly sure 
whether there has been any condition left uh, out due to maybe a typing error or anything. And uh, honestly speaking, I don't exactly at this point of time remember what the actual question was because this is a logical reasoning question. One possibly can't remember all the criteria. So I uh, don't exactly remember what the question, what all the criteria was. But had this criteria been given, these are the answers. These are the four options, the four cases that could have happened. All of them fulfilling the criteria and hence B and C would be the correct ones and the incorrect ones should be A and B. So, I mean, nowhere it is said that you cannot sit, uh, you cannot be parked at an extreme end. Nothing of that sort has been written. Had that been written, we could have said. I mean, had that one criteria been written that you cannot be parked at an extreme end, then this would have got cancelled. But since that is not written, so this is absolutely valid. And hence, Carpi is parked at an extreme end. Uh, is not always valid. So we leave it at this. A transparent square sheet shown above is folded along the dotted line. The folded sheet will look like what? Very simple. If it is folded along the dotted line, so you see it would be somewhat like this. And this would also be somewhat like this. And had this been long enough, so this would have met it and the picture would have looked like this. So C would have been the correct option. The people dash were at the demonstration were from all sections of the society. So it would be the people who were at the demonstration were from all sections of the society. Who would be? the correct one that could fit in there. Okay, preposition. Oasis is to sand. Oasis means that uh, pool of water, water source found in a desert. So oasis is to sand as island is to water naturally because uh, within sand, uh, oasis is found. Within water, an island is found. So the island is to water so this would be the correct one for a regular polygon having 10 sides the interior angle between the sides of the polygons in degrees is how much see if a polygon has however how many sides the polygon has the summation of the exterior angles of a polygon is always 360 now it has been said that this is a regular polygon. Regular polygon means equal sides. And since the sides are equal, therefore interior angles are also equal. And because interior angles are equal, hence exterior angles are also equal. So the total exterior angles is 360 degree. There will be 10 exterior angles because there are 10 sides and all of them are equal. So therefore each exterior angle, what will be the value? 360 degree divided by 10, that is 36 degree. Therefore each interior angle each interior angle what will be the value it will be 180 degree because interior angle is 180 degree minus the exterior angle so that is minus 36 degree which would be equal to 144 degree so that is our answer okay so that is it these are all the questions. Thank you.